This channel is part of the Nick Terrell Network. Sit back, relax and enjoy your featured presentation. Hi guys, hello and welcome back to another video right here on Chits. So, as of time of recording, it is the 21st of October 2024. We are 10 days away from Halloween. So, what better way than to do a horror-based board game unboxing? So, I have chosen for you today the last night on earth okay so this is one of those typical survival horror jobs uh, excuse the echo the studio is out of action at the minute uh, i'm in the bedroom <laughs> so if it all sounds a bit tinny i do apologize so yeah going back to the job at hand so what is last night on earth about apart from the obvious title okay so i'll show you the cover first give you a wee bit of an idea properly okay so this game basically has all your standard horror tropes, um, your zombies, your different characters, your jocks, your cheerleaders, all that kind of thing. It's like basically scenario based. Um, it can be played co-op. Uh, on the back it says two to six players. Um, I'll go into that a little bit more. Um, let me show you the back. Okay, so you know what we're talking about. So you see like the board, the tiles and the characters and some of the pieces and the bits and bobs. Throw on the trusty specs, I'll give you a little bit of an intro from the back of the box. Last night on Earth, the zombie game. When night begins to fall on a sleepy town of Wooden Vale, the shadows and fog rolling in bring with them more than just a chill shiver. A living nightmare erupts as the once peaceful community is overrun with restless dead, scratching and clawing their way to the surface with an insatiable hunger for human flesh. Now only a handful of unlikely heroes are left, banding together to fight for their very lives on a night that never ends. The only thing worse than death is becoming infected. Uh, Last Night on Earth, the zombie game, is a fast-paced game of brain-eating zombies, small-town heroes and horror movie action. Players take on the role of either heroes working together to make it through the night or the zombies. Unending waves of undead spreading over the town like a plague. Featuring a modular board, eight heroes to choose from and multiple different scenarios that drastically change the game. Last Night on Earth is designed to create a cinematic feel as the story and game unfold. So put down the popcorn, grab your shotgun and hide your brain. The zombies are coming and this could be your last night on Earth. Um, this is Flying Frog Productions for two to six players, age 12 plus, and it plays 60 to 90 minutes. Okay, so let's take a look in the box and see what's happening here. Okay, so straight away... We open up and we find our rule book. Uh, we have a little glossary on the back um, with some little icons and stuff like that. Those who know me know I actually do like guides on the back of games, but I'm not going to hit them too hard with that. Okay, and then we get um, a double sided big piece of card. So this is like either like the woodland area, sort of outside, or there is like it looks like a house on the other side, so double sided there. And these are nice. We've got one, two, three, four, five. So we've got six little L-shaped pieces that go around the board like such to make up your board for scenarios. And these are nice. Um, there's like a farmhouse and a cornfield on that one. A gun shop, the plant and general store on that one. Gas station, junkyard, um, road out of town and the bank on that one the high school and the gym the hospital the airplane hangar and the diner uh, the church and the police station and the graveyard so straight away we see there's like all the horror troops and what you do with that is you put the middle tile down and then depending upon your scenario you would um put the relevant tiles in all very nice so far. Uh, what I did like about this as well is there's a, um, a CD, uh, a Last Night on Earth soundtrack. So you can actually put that on and kind of lower your candles and have a little bit of a vibe. Uh, soundtrack, From the Shadows, Heavy Rain, Sally, Heroic Resolve, Faith, The Drifter, Escape in the Truck, Haunted by the Past, Jenny and Johnny, Oh the Horror and the Ending Credits. Uh, featuring original music by Mary, ba Mary Beth McGarlany. I think that's pronounced so yeah that's uh that's nice we don't often see that and i thought it was a lovely little touch to your gaming night i mean most of us of course will throw on like a little bit of youtube or ambience playlist on spotify but that's nice lovely out the box 
uh, we have a set of dice that is uh, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 16 dice. They're just ordinary D6 light. I'm going to show you the miniatures in a minute. I've got two bags of miniatures. So I've got a little sun tracker on here. So the scenarios are basically turn around and they'll tell you where your dial starts. And then like every game round will sort of count down until sunrise there. We have... Well, these oh, these are the hero character sheets. I'll show those in a minute. On top of that, we have a Flying Frog Productions Spring 2015 catalogue. So it goes to show how old this game is. I basically, I got into Zombicide and I kind of went like along the Zombicide route. And then someone recommended this to me. I think it was on BGG, uh, on the Geek, Board Game Geek. And I just love the idea of it. That basic, you know your own horror movie, cheesy B-movie kind of thing, whereas, like, your zombie sides are more, you know, bang, bang, and this, that, and the other. This is more, like, sort of search stuff. I mean, yeah, zombie side has some of that in it, but you know what I mean? To me, this was different enough, a zombie thing, to actually get alongside zombie side. Okay, so let's have a look. Hero characters. Now, what I do like about these straight away is they are, like, a really, really thick card. So they're nice. Okay, so they all have the same back on them. And I'm just going to go through them quickly. Um, this is Sally, the high school sweetheart. What you might notice as well straight away is there's actually real life photos of people on this where it did actually, the game got like criticised for it. I'm not really sure why. Uh, there's Billy, who's the sheriff's son. So you see all these standard tropes here now. Johnny, the jock, the high school quarterback. Sheriff Anderson, small town lawman. Thank you, Rick Grimes from The Walking Dead. Jake Cartwright, the drifter. Father Joseph, man of the cloth, obviously the priest. Jenny, the farmer's daughter. Becky, the nurse. Okay, let's have a look here now. Okay, they were the characters. So these are now the scenarios uh, denoted by... Game scenario should really have seen that, shouldn't I? It's been a little while since I've been on shit, so uh, yeah, forgive me, folks. Okay, so these are the scenarios in no particular order. Listening to the titles, you're going to get the gist of what we're doing here. Die, zombies, die. Always sounds nice. Save the town folk. Burn them out. Defend the manor house. And escape in the truck. So already with those sort of varied little scenarios, one, two, three, five scenarios, uh, eight characters. You've got that little bit of like kind of playability. And then we have um, one, two, three, four sets of cards, which I'm not going to open because I never ever do do so anyway because I don't like spoiling these things for folks. So you've got um, a hero deck there. Um, recovery, play any hero, play on any hero except during a fight to heal one wound from them. Okay, so these are your standard, as you search, you find these bits and bobs. Uh, another hero deck, that one's got a signal flare, a range of four squares, um, says so what you can do with that one there. So you get the idea, you can find basically weapons, um, first aid, that kind of thing, gasoline, keys, the sort of stuff that you need for your scenarios, okay? Uh, what's this? The zombie deck. Okay, so the zombies get their own cards as well. Um, this could be our last night on Earth. Um, and it tells you what that's about there. And then we get um, another set of, presumably these are zombie cards, because it does say shamble. Play this card to move a zombie D6 spaces instead of its normal move. Okay, and we have a zombie turn summary. Okay, so just for anyone interested there, um, each zombie turn... Has six steps that must be done. Move the sun track marker. That was the big card we saw before. Draw a new zombie card. Roll to spawn new zombies. Move your zombies. Fight heroes. Place newly spawned zombies. So basically, if you are the zombie player, that is what you're doing. You're going along doing your stuff and you're bringing back more zombies. So for the survivors, it's just going to be something like you're just going to be overwhelmed, swarmed with zombies. Um, I think what I'll do quickly as well before I show you the other little counters and the... Um, little miniatures as well, is explain. You know, you could do this really, really easy. It says it's like two to six players. 
Um, but there are sometimes times when you know you can't you just can't get your mates around or whatever, and you just feel like that little bit of a Halloween game, you know, spooky game. Um, so it could easily be done. Um, you know, work out how many survivors you want to run. You know, two survivors, four, whatever. Do all their turns like that, and then with the zombies. I'd basically just take the zombie cards out or shuffle them in and draw one randomly per turn. Um, and with your zombies, they're going to... I'd just do like the line of sight rule. I'd spawn them as normal, but I'd just move them, like if it's one square or whatever, towards the nearest survivor. Because like that's what would happen um, in like an apocalypse, you know? So I wouldn't worry about getting this game if you're thinking, oh, my gaming group's not going to like it. You know, my wife won't want to play it, my girlfriend, me, you know, my mates or the family, the kids, whatever. Don't worry about it, you know what I mean? It's a nicely worked little game that could easily be done like that solo. Um, so yeah, just bear that in mind, folks. Don't let the two to six players, you have to play the zombies, you have to play the humans. Nah, don't. It's your game, play it how you like. But little tip for you there, guys. That one's on the house, okay? So let's go back now. So we have a bag of numerous tokens. Um, there's all sorts in here. Um, like wounds and uh, you know all types of stuff like that gasoline markers and your little objective markers things like that anyone who's played any of these games will know the kind of thing that you get and we have the little miniatures okay so these are nice because they're coloured as such that the survivors are grey I'm just sorting those out as I'm talking here which is really nice so they're distinguishable on the board and then we have um, two Four, he says, there's one drops. Six. So we have seven zombies for one player and seven zombies for another. Now, the thing about these, I'm going to show you some of them. But basically, head to head, is you've got this kind of brownie type of colour and you've got this sort of green type of colour. Now, that doesn't denote like, anything apart from the fact of, like, you know, different players. So, for example, you could... I'll quickly show all the figures to you. So you get an idea. There's like a couple of little poses there. These are quite nice. You know, I say on the, all these games, you could paint them. But, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, they're nice out the box as well. So, there we go. We're nearly through them there. I mean, if you were going to play... i tell you what, let me finish showing the miniatures and then I'll make my little point over the zombies and the colours. So I think these are just like repeats, to be fair. Just the different colours. But, you know, the zombies, the, the, you know, the cannon fodder aren't, they, they don't have to be, you know, like, um, perfectly sculpted. Yes, you know, in the ideal world, it's nice. But I think if we have, like, a Marvel game or a DC game or Star Wars game, something like that, we want better sculpted minis. These just do the job. Okay, so they are all generic. And then I'm going to go, I don't know the names of the survivors, because, like I say, it's just, uh, you know, I've just opened a box. But there we go. There's one. All interesting, different, separate poses, obviously, being the survivors. There we go. Actually quite nice light in this room, to be honest. Okay. So anybody who loves, like, stuff like The Walking Dead or, you know, uh, Ramiro movies, anything like that, you know, 28 Days Later, that kind of thing, I'd have to absolutely love these. Oh, yeah, actually got a chainsaw there. Sweet. So, yeah, going back to uh, the point I was going to say about the zombies being, like, the different colours. So, you could sort of have, like, a three-player game. You'd have one person controlling all the humans, you know, in the grey. You'd have one person controlling the orange zombies, brown zombies, whichever way you want to put And another player controlling the greens. That's why you've got, like, the two different colour zombies to denote the different factions. But, as I say, the way I play, and the way I would play, I'd recommend to play if you are a solo player, is just pull them all in together. You know, the zombies aren't, it doesn't matter, does it? You know what I mean? Okay, so I'm going to move those out of shot there now. And I'm just going to have a quick peep at the rule book. Okay, so nice big rule book. A4 rule book. And it's quite thick, to be honest. Um, how many pages? 23 pages. Okay, so it gives us a little introduction. Game overview. Game breakdown. Um, each game round is split into two turns. The zombie turn and the hero during a zombie turn, the zombie players get to move and attack with their zombies, as well as possibly spawn new zombies. During a hero turn, each hero gets to move to take a move action, so move or search if in the building, and attack in any order they wish. The game ends when either the objectives of the scenario can't get repeated, are completed, or when the sun track marker reaches the end of the track. Gives a list of contents. Um, 
gives players... Um, it says here though, you know, last night on Earth the zombie game can be played by two to six brackets. There are always at least one hero player and one zombie player. But that doesn't matter. Go back to what I said earlier. And it gives you like a little chart. Two players, three players, four players, five players, six players. Who plays which? How many pieces? All that kind of stuff. Game components. It tells us about wound markers, the sun marker, uh, new spawning, taken over, lights out. So... You know, nice and clearly laid out. Um, and then tells us more about the rest of the markers um, and all the different card types. And then we go on to the hero character sheets. Um, tells us about the game boards, how we set them up. Um, and then the basic game, um, setting up, create the game board, shuffle and place the card decks, draw and place the hero characters, create the zombie pool. Those pages there. Um, place the starting zombies, prepare the counters and the dice, and then the game round, which we've gone over that. There's a zombie round and a hero turn, okay? So, I've covered the zombie one before on the little um, card. Uh, the hero turn. So, you do your move action, which is either move or search, like it said. Um, you can exchange items if you're in the same place as another player, same location. Ranged attack. You fire like a rifle or whatever you've got and then you fight the zombies and we get a nice little breakdown there and some little examples of how you work the fights out. Uh, it tells about items um, and line of sight which is very important for games like this obviously. Where you're working, can you shoot, can you see things, um, how you fight and then tells us about the zombie fight cards, how you wound and heal heroes. Um, how you play the event cards and the timing. Cancelling cards and fights, rolling a random building, what happens when you run out of cards and how you win the game. Okay, there we go. And then there's another one of these here where it says you are now ready to play your first game using the basic rules. And then we have the advanced game, um, which just sort of changes a few bits and bobs around for you. Again, nicely laid out, nice and clear. Um, and it tells us again about the hero profiles. A little bit of background on all the folks involved there. Um, and an FAQ and the game credits at the very end. So, I'm not sure at time of recording um, how much this is now on like your Amazon or whatever. Uh, at the time, I do remember it being like a lot cheaper than Zombie Side. So, it's like a, I hate using the term like a poor man's, you know, replacement. Um, I think Zombie Side is still top of the box for me in this category. However, Last Night on Earth is a nice little alternative. So depending upon your choices, your budget, your gaming group, or just how you feel on the day. Uh, this one is well worth a go, guys. Okay, it comes with a chit's recommendation. Um, give it a go. If I don't see you before, enjoy your Halloween. See you next time. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and join the Nitterrell Network today.